Let's get adventurous and try some water sports. Hello and welcome to Chinny Vision. And today we're going to be looking at six computer games that are based on the water, not beneath it, not kind of submarine stuff. No, we're going to have games that are based above the water, like, like these guys here. Well, not quite like those guys there, because we covered sailing by Activision a couple of years ago. We've got lots of activities on the water, and we're going to start off with Power Boat Simulator by Codemasters. And all the games today I'm going to look at are on the 8 bits. And we're starting off on the C64 on this version. A 1989 game, surprisingly not by the Oliver Twins. And we're in C64 territory. It's a vertically scrolling racing game, or kind of racing game. Like most power boat racing, you get to drop mines. <laughs> but it reminds you of the boat bits in Spy Hunter, which is no bad thing. It's one or two player. Helicopters will drop things on you, and the courses are quite short, but there are jumps and excitement, so you get that live and let die feeling. Spectrum version does chug along a bit. There's also a version for the CPC and 16-bit versions for the ST and Amiga. Amstrad version is in mode zero, surprisingly, because I was expecting a specky port. Not all the courses are logical. Some of them have jumps that will lead you to your death. Every second level is a bonus level, so you have to go between the boys in order to complete the level. So a little bit of variation. And there is two-player action you can play with a friend, which adds a whole different dimension to the game. There aren't many powerboat racing games on the 8-bit, so yeah, this is pretty much as good as it gets. Who remembers Canoe Squad, the 1970s TV show where kids fight river crime? Well, sadly, there was never an official Canoe Squad game, but there is Ride the Rapids by players. And this is the Amstrad CPC version of Budget Game again. You have to ride down the river between the boys again whilst canoeing and conserving your energy. You press forward, even though they're going downwards, to propel yourself forward. But the aim is to, as I say, conserve the energy. So you want to try and literally ride the rapids. The game only came out on the Amstrad and the Spectrum. The Spectrum version is monochromatic, and as a result, it's very hard to see what you're doing because the rocks, the boys, the rapids are all the same colour. Although the boys do light up once you've gone through them, but it's hard to see where they are. Is that one there? No. It's probably a rock. Is that a boy there? Yes, it's a boy. And the game does come with a course designer. Yes, you can add rocks or, or remove them in this case, add hazards and do all sorts of things. So there's, well, it's a limited thing because the course always goes the same way. But a bit of extra fun for you. I was going to cover Championship Water Ski on the CPC again, but then I came across Water Ski 3D by Alligator. And yes, it looks like a very basic game, and it looks a bit like an Atari 2600 game. But it's a 1983 release where you ski along behind a boat, avoid holes in the water. What are those things? and occasionally jump over a ramp. And no, there are no more levels than this. You just go around the course again, 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 again. Can I get, oh, I couldn't get on that ramp there. Oh no, I, I went over one of the holes in the water and a shark came and ate me. Can I get on there? No, I thought I got on there. The perspective of things coming towards you is somewhat uh, odd at times. But in 1983, you would have been going, wow, at this I got on the ramp that time. It does, however, have the long-term appeal of a game and watch game, and I've been eaten by a shark again. And you can go around forever and ever. I have locked the timer, though, using a cheat. And that's the only thing. You have to basically get around fast enough to keep the timer going. Short-term and limited fun, but interesting for a 1983 game. Is riding a rubber ring down a river a sport? Well, let's pretend it is, because I rather like tubing. Covered on Chinny Vision before, 
the Spectrum version, I think, is a particular highlight. A jolly 128K tune. Variation between the different sections of rivers with the colours. Yes, of course, Ethel Specky's li limited palette, but it seems strangely colourful. I think it's because some of the obstacles are coloured. You know the score with Tubin, it's the arcade game, you ride down the river and you can do it one or two player. And here's the C64 version. Again, jolly good fun on the 64. Perhaps that version chugs a bit. Wouldn't be my first choice, or even my second choice, which is why it's not going to be on this video today. Of course, it does get fairly boring after a while because there's not an awful lot of variation here. But there's a challenge. And here's the two-player mode on the Spectrum. Look, there's David Darling riding a jet ski. Now, the thing about Championship Get Jet Ski ready. Simulator and Jet Bike Simulator is they are essentially the same game. However, Jet Ski Simulator is cut down because Jet Bike Simulator was one of the mid-priced Codemaster games and it came on two tapes and had more levels. So in Jet Ski Simulator, you only get the lake levels. You don't get the coastal levels, but it's essentially the same game. If you want to have all the levels, then get Jet Bike Simulator. You know the deal. It's the standard Codemasters top-down, go-around-the-course game, be it BMXs, Grand Prix cars, what have you. However, for my money, it's the most playable of this genre that Codemasters had. The exaggerated handling works on jet skis, where I always found F1 Simulator a little bit uh, annoying. And here's one of the expert courses on Jet Bike Simulator. All good fun. Plays identically on the Spectrum Amstrad and Commodore. So take your pick as to which version you want to play. There's four players in the game, of which up to two can be human controlled. And you can even type your name in for extra thrills. And all versions have speech, oddly or seemingly different. What could Aquaplane be? Well, yeah, it's a water skiing game. Released by Quicksilver on the C64 and the Spectrum. We're looking at the C64 version here. The Specky version is pretty much identical. You have to ride through a course and avoid the obstacles. It seems fairly mundane at first, with just these logs appearing. I assume they're logs, tree trunks. Don't know what they are. Tree trunks green? However, quickly, the baddies get more difficult. For example, sharks that go diagonally and come out the water at you. Ah! And then later on, you get a mix of things. Okay, it has that game and watch thing of it being very simple with the sound effects and the same kind of things appearing. But it's, it's oddly compelling if short-lived. So that was six 8-bit water sport-based computer games. Powerboat Simulator. Well, not many examples of this on the 8-bits. And yes, okay, you could say the boat could be a car. The courses are varied. There's not an awful lot of levels. I think it loops around at level 8 or something. The budget game, there is a reasonable amount of fun there. Riding the Rapids is rather unique. Uh, I can't think of many canoe-based computer games. So it's nice to see that. An on spectrum version, unforgivingly monochrome. Why couldn't they add a splash colour like tubing just so you could see the obstacles a little bit better? Nice to have a course designer though. 3D water ski. Well, I'll be playing championship water ski on the CPC, frankly. Again, covered before on the channel. A curio, really. Not much cool to play it today. Very limited, but back in 1983, I suspect you would have been well pleased to buy this game. Tubin is a solid arcade conversion of a solid arcade game. For me, I think the Spectrum version just edges it, and as I say, the Amstrad version don't bother really. It's just a slower version of the Spectrum with less colour. Jet Ski Simulator, Jet Bike Simulator, the best example of that top-down genre from Codemasters. Many people say no to BNX Simulator. 
I think it's this. I think the exaggerated handling and the top-down view really work for this game in the way they didn't work for the other games. And if you get the jet bike version, then wow, you've got a lot of courses to play. Aquaplane, limited game and watch style fun, but one you just play and you suddenly get into it and you're in the zone, especially on the more advanced levels. Don't let the basic look of the game put you off. There's well, certainly five, ten minutes of fun to be had here. Overall, it's been a bit of a struggle to get these games together, especially to try and show stuff that hasn't been on Chini Vision before, and I had to show Tubin in the end, as there's not an awful lot of examples of the genre on the 8 bits. And perhaps, you know, in 2023, people might start thinking, hey, instead of doing more platformers and shoot 'em ups as new 8 bit games, perhaps we could do a really good water skiing game. <laughs>